Cauliflower, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing my top 10 worst products that is in my collection now. Uh, this video was inspired by a video that Jen Love Reviews just did on her top 20 brand, the worst products for brands, but I'm doing it a little bit differently. It's not exactly just the brands itself. It's just products that I've used over a course of time that I found out that basically just didn't work for me. And I've kept in my collection because I had to talk about it at some point. So we're going to just talk about the bad products. Um, if any of these products work for you, I don't want to insult you or make you feel bad about them. They're just products that just didn't work out for me personally. And um, there are 10 different types. Um, we've got skincare, we've got makeup, you know, that kind of a thing. So it's not just diving into one area. So let's get started. I want to talk about are of the skincare nature and I have two products here from two completely different companies and two completely different price points. Let's talk about the more higher end point. This is La Mer and this is basically just a oil. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's a transforming oil. Um, when I first used this, I thought it was great. But honestly, I figured out that it wasn't this that made everything great because honestly, I don't know what this is supposed to do. Um, I have used this before using makeup. I have used this at night. I have used this during the day. It has absolutely no smell or anything of that nature, but there's really nothing I see that it does. And I know that this is expensive stuff. La Mer is never anywhere near under $50. In fact, it's over either a hundred or it's about the $80 mark. And I think this actually kind of uh, goes up between 80 or $90 for this specific product that I actually got through a friend of mine who sent me a bunch of different La Mer products. When I first started using it, I thought it was really great. But then again, it could have been just other serums that I was combining it with that could have been doing it itself. But on its own, I don't see what it does. Okay. And the next is from e.l.f. Oh, e.l.f. These are the uh, booster drops. Exactly what are we boosting, e.l.f.? Because to me, again, just very close to La Mer, you put this on and I, I, don't, I don't honestly see what it does. It's like putting running water on your face because it's very, very watery. Um, it's supposed to, I guess, when you add it to other skin um, products like your moisturizers or your serums or what have you. It's supposed to do something, but I've been using it so long that I don't even notice if it does anything, to be honest with you. And um, this is about a $10 product. I mean, it's not exactly too expensive, but it's not exactly cheap. Just to basically lay on your skin because that's all I think it really does. So not really sure what it's for. The next product I want to talk about that is for the face is in the form of a powder. And this is from Bare Minerals. This is, sorry about that guys, because it's like a mirror, but it's Bare Minerals Blemish Remedy. And this is in the color Clearly Medium. Now this is supposed to be a powder foundation, which is also supposed to help your blemishes or what have you. Um, this stuff is like the darkest stuff. And honestly, I don't know what it's supposed to do. It's a powder. I don't think I would use this as a foundation because if, can you see this right here? It is very orange. It turns very, very orange. And you look like you're like a flaking Cheeto in the sun. It honestly does not look very nice at all. The powder itself feels nice, but once you apply it to your skin, like if you put this all over your face, you could definitely tell you're in Oompa Loompa land. It is not something that I think works for blemishes or anything of that nature. Maybe it has some uh, salicylic acid in it or something of that nature, but I can't see how it worked for anything. Honestly, it just lays on your skin and just stays there. It's all nothing but a mess. Another e.l.f. product that I actually did try on my channel. You guys saw it in a Get Ready With Me when I was using new products, uh, first impressions, that kind of a thing. And it's in the form of the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. And if you saw anything my video showed, it basically was like putting paste on your face. Not saying that this isn't a decent concealer once you actually work it in, but why do we have to have that much maintenance on a concealer? This is absolutely like putting on paste. The doe foot applicator is uh, very reminiscent of the Tarte Shape Tape, um, but I don't know why we all need to do this. Look at that. That is how flipping bright that is. I think this is in the color, what color are you? 
in. This is fair. That is way lighter than fair. That is just like, that's, that's alabaster. That's not fair. And like I said, to try to work this into your skin, it takes a while. I mean, it kind of just leaves itself there for a little while and then it blends in. And not saying that it doesn't look good after a while, but you have this cast underneath your eyes and that I was not impressed with um, after using it a few times after my video. So not exactly a big fan of this e.l.f. camo concealer. They can definitely do better. Foundation in this entire collection of actual bad products and this one is in the form of a higher end company which I wasn't actually surprised because it's in a formula I probably should have known was not going to work for me it was the Anastasia Beverly Hills stick foundation and this is in the color banana which honestly should have worked for my skin but this has got to be the worst uh, attempt at trying to put on a foundation because it just drags across your skin and then it just lays there. It doesn't feel like it blends in. In fact, I think it's way too emollient for its own good. And it doesn't look good. It's very cakey. Um, it's not something that I would expect from a higher end found. Moving on to mascaras. As you guys know, I'm a big mascara person. I'm always talking about mascaras on my channel. And I mentioned this a few times now since I've used it a couple of times and it has disappointed me greatly. That is the Maybelline Snap Scara. Um, this was just something that I thought was going to be so cool and ended up just disappointing me. The packaging on this is extremely cute with the little eyes and the lashes and everything of that nature. But as far as the formula on this, it just falls flat. Um, this is actually a colored mascara. It's not the usual black or brown color. This was actually a burgundy color. But I did say in a video that it just does not show up. And you can put it on three, four, or five times and you still won't see it. And as far as the mascara formula itself, it didn't do anything. It kind of just laid dormant. It kept my lashes extremely stick straight. It didn't really carry over any kind of length or any kind of volume of that nature. And again, uh, Maybelline, I really kind of look to for high, not high, but higher quality is what I'm trying to say. Higher quality drugstore mascaras. Maybelline has by far always been one of my favorites, but this just sunk to the bottom. And the next one I have is a, I guess you can call this a higher end, but uh, uh, this is the Duce, do say whatever it is. Do, do not, <laughs> this is what I say, do not get this mascara. Um, we got this, I think, in BoxyCharm. This is the Punk Volumizer Mascara. No, no, this is not a volumizing mascara. This is a messy mascara. This is just a mascara that you think is going to look good because, I don't know, it kind of gives me Kat Von D remnants with the packaging and a little bit of um, even NARS a little bit because of the coloring. But the formula itself is garbage. It actually does nothing. It just, again, it clumps at the end of your lashes. It gives off the impression it's going to be volumizing, but then like maybe 15, 20 minutes later, it just falls flat and it does absolutely nothing. So no, I don't recommend do say. In fact, do nice shadow. And I really have to say that I've been pretty, pretty impressed with the fact that I haven't had a lot more eyeshadow palette uh, fails because I do like to try a lot of different eyeshadows, but I've only had two that stuck out, um, especially when I first tried them out and they're in the form of drugstore on both ends. Let's talk about the one from LA Girl. This is the nudist palette, uh, which I purchased because I heard Nicole from uh, Young, <laughs> Young Wild and Polished. She raved over this palette, raved over this boring thing that just to me, again, with these colors, again, with this formula, it's like, all right, we get it with these types of just nude, powdery type of um, palettes. And honestly, like even the black, she's like, oh, the black is amazing. Like, I just don't see it. Honestly, trying this a few times, um, I never got a good look out of this. Everything looked muddy. Everything looked like just really like interchanging into one color. It was all very murky. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for. It's just very murky and not the kind of palette that I would recommend to people. So the other one came in the form of Makeup Revolution. Now, to be fair, this was on the Makeup Revolution UK website, which of course you can't get an Ulta or anything of that nature, but you can order these. And this was in their clearance section. Now I know why. 
This is the My Sign uh, pa uh, palettes. These were a great idea. Like you got like every type of horoscope and you got a different palette for each one of those signs. This is in Gemini and I use this on my channel. I think you guys saw that I used one side was Gemini. The other side was Sagittarius. <laughs> Didn't matter to me because it all looked like crap. And very close to what LA girl, it just, I mean, there's a lot of glitter payoff in there and on your eyes, it just did not work. Very powdery, very just lackluster, didn't do much. So I definitely would not recommend this. This was not a good one. So the products I'm gonna talk about are in the form of lips. And I have one company that I kind of knew was gonna fail me because I'm not a big fan of them to begin with. And that is Gerard Cosmetics. That's these uh, liquid lipsticks. I don't know what formula they're in. I actually like this one a little bit better than the rest of them, but they all have the one thing that drives me crazy and it's the lack of opacity. It's just so sheer and so like, you have to keep building it up and building it up and building it up. And once you do, then you get that wonderful dryness that I cannot stand on your lips. Um, and it, it's sticky too as well. Like you have to keep building it up to get it to be this opaque and it's very sticky. Um, this one, I like the color but definitely not the formula. I've been trying and trying and trying and trying, but again, like I said, as far as opacity is concerned, it just does not work for me. It's just not good, and I try to give it a shot, but you know what? I should have known from my instincts that no, no, no. All right, and the last thing I have is from Too Faced. It's their melted, melted latex. Should have known if it's gonna be at Marshalls, it's, it's not gonna be a good product on some things, not on everything. Um, this one in particular, this liquefied, uh, I don't even know the color because of course everything's way too tiny for me to read, but talk about sheer. This is one of them. I don't know what it's going for, if it's supposed to be a gloss or what have you, but it does not look like this. It actually separates when it's on your lips. In fact, I will demonstrate how it looks like that. Okay. So here it is. And to me, like, can you see that? Like right away, it is separating. You see that? It gives you that little bit of a streak there. Yeah, no, this is not my cup of tea. I have gotten better uh, looks out of way cheaper liquid lipsticks. I have gotten better looks out of Shop Missé, out of Essence, out of Catrice. You can go for all of those and get way better color payoff and way better formulas than uh, this one gave out. So honestly, not one of their better products as far as um, lip lip things are concerned, but you know what, Too Faced is not big on their lip products. There's been a bunch of things that Too Faced has put out lip product wise that kind of just went <clears throat> for me. Okay guys, that is it for my top 10 products I hate that are in my collection and probably will be seeing their way out of my collection as soon as this video is up and over. Make sure that you hit that bell for every video that I upload and keep in time and keep in rhythm with all the music that's generating out of my channel. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao.